It was a very short dream about a week ago, but it stuck with me since because of how vivid and real it was. I dreamed I was building a wall in Germany. Right before I woke up, I saw the word Wernmacht written on the side of a truck. I was building a wall or structure thing I'd never seen before. Then I was hit by artillery and died quickly. I was pouring cement into a mold to make a weird block looking thing. Normally, I wouldn't really think twice about this, but it was so vivid I figured what, I'll look into it. I didn't know this before the dream and wasn't familiar with it before. Maybe I saw it on the History Channel or something in the past, but never something I studied or researched in the slightest. I just thought they were called Nazis, the German army, Axis powers, etc. I didn't know they were specifically called the Wehrmacht. Here's where it gets weird. When I was researching this, I found something called the Siegfried Line. This is such a small detail that I'm almost positive I'd never heard of it before. So I had a dream I was in the German army I'd never heard of called the Wehrmacht, working on a very specific defense mission for the German army before getting hit with a shell and dying on the spot. I'm a very skeptical person and still trying to wrap my head around this. It sounds ridiculous, but it was like seeing a part of my past life. I think we're reincarnated, or consciousness, in a sense, gets recycled, and we are born from multiple consciousnesses, from multiple people. Like we're a mix of several past lives or something. Again, I'd never even consider this unless it had happened to me and been so profound. When I was about five or six years old, my sisters and I used to share a room. Most nights, my older sister and I would see two distinct figures. She would see a lady in white standing in the doorway directly in front of my bed. I would see a man with red eyes, or at least I thought it was a man, as all I could see were red eyes. Though my sister could see the lady, she said she never spoke to her. She just stood there getting closer every night. While I, on the other hand, would see a pair of bright red eyes staring at me from the closet. A disembodied masculine voice would whisper, JJ, come to the closet and play, over and over. Sometimes my older sister and I would jump in each other's beds and hide under the blankets until morning. This was going on for months until my dad decided to get the house blessed again. We never saw them after that. I'm 24 now and my wife and I recently had a baby. I've been having weird dreams recently. They would always start with me standing in my son's room, staring at the closet and the familiar set of red eyes would stare back at me. My most recent dream, he actually spoke. His voice a lot deeper and booming than I remember. You didn't come play with me, but your son may be the one to play, he said before I woke up. I called my dad and told him about the whole thing. He told me he remembers me telling him about that man years before, but then, just then, he went silent for about five minutes. When he spoke again, he recounted seeing the same figure as a child. He also told me he remembered having the same dream after I was born. I've blessed, blessed my house twice already, but I can only protect my son so much. I just hope, I really, really hope that he doesn't go play in the closet. I may never see him again. When I was 27, my mom and I got into a car accident. I remember the moment of impact and the dreaming of my mom walking away from me. I ran to catch up with her and she turned and said, no, don't follow me and kept walking. After a moment's pause, I started to follow again and she turned around again and said, Ian, don't follow me. Your daughter needs you. I was confused because I had no children and asked her what she meant, but she just continued to walk away. I wanted to follow her. I felt like I was being pulled towards her, but I stayed where I was. 
my next memory is of waking up in the hospital. Apparently, I'd been seriously injured. My heart had stopped in the ambulance on the way to the hospital, and no one knew if I was going to pull through for several days. I asked if my mom was okay, and was told she died almost instantly upon impact. I chose not to tell anyone about my dream, but I did have a nagging feeling about what my mom had said about my daughter. So I asked my girlfriend, now my wife, to take a pregnancy test, which was positive. My daughter is six years old now. Her middle name is my mom's name. Since she was a baby, it seemed like she was seeing someone who wasn't there. She would look over my shoulder and her eyes would fixate on something. She'd react as if someone was interacting with her, reaching out to them, smiling or giggling at them, crawling towards them. We thought it was normal baby stuff until our son came along and didn't do anything like that. She learned the word Nana, despite none of us remembering teaching it to her, as my wife's mom is grandma, not Nana. Recently, I was going through a family photo album my dad had given me to scan the photos, and she pointed to a photo of my mom and said, that's Nana. I started telling her about my mom and mentioned she'd never met her, but my daughter disagreed. She'd said she'd talked to her nana, but couldn't remember when. She did remember that her nana told her a funny story about how I fell into a river when I was nine and recounted it in the same way my mom used to tell the story. I know all of these things can somewhat be explained away rationally. Brains can some do some wacky things during traumatic experiences and after head injuries. It's possible I'd subconsciously notice my wife's pregnancy symptoms and that came out in my dream. Kids have vivid imaginations. Maybe someone told my daughter the story and forgot about it. But I like to think my mom really did save me from dying that day and is watching over us. I like to think that at least my daughter didn't miss out on meeting my mom. It's comforting, feeling like maybe she's still out there. My dad told me he was going back to his country for a month. He had some business stuff to do and then he'll be back. I mean, it was pretty normal of him to do this. He'd go every few years or so to handle business matters with his family. He called me on the way to the airport and said he will call after he lands there. I had been struggling mentally due to the pandemic and losing my job. He knew this and so he was calling about once a week or so to check in on me. After a couple of weeks of him being away, he tried calling me non-stop for a few days in a row. I didn't answer. I was super depressed and just didn't want to talk to anyone. Then, a week or so passes and I get a message from my uncle that my dad has COVID, so he can't board his flight that was the following week. At this point, we were getting videos, pictures and messages from my uncle of his condition. I've never seen my dad in a hospital before. And here he was in a hospital gown. About two and a half more weeks passed. They were updating us the entire time about his condition. It got worse, then got better. Then they said they were releasing him home because he was a lot better. I was skeptical, but okay nonetheless. I was happy. But about a week before he was released home, something I couldn't shake. I had a premonition. I had gotten a phone call, a man's voice telling me my dad passed and a woman screaming in the background. And I was just in shock. So now going back to the parts when he came home and we got the news that he was getting better, I thought, oh, it's just your anxiety again. He's not gonna die. The premonition was a lie. But two days passed and guess what? I got the phone call with the man's voice saying your dad has passed away. It was my cousin. I heard the screams in the background. It was my aunt. Just exactly how I had imagined or daydreamed of. I mean, I was awake when I had the premonition. That's kind of what it felt like. A daydream. And my cousin and aunt weren't the people who were in the house with him. They lived about 30 miles away. My relatives in the house had been trying to call me but couldn't get through. So they told my cousin to call me and give me the news.
He passed away tragically at the age of 25, due to a drunk driver hitting us almost four years ago. He gives me messages that I know it's him. This is one example. I was having such a hard time with his death and everything in my life last year during the beginning of COVID. I tried to join a giveaway for a reading from a medium online and was so desperate to have that reading so I could communicate with him, but I didn't win. I was so bummed and that made me go into a deeper depression. I was so mad that I couldn't communicate with him that way. Later on that week, I ordered a tuna Subway sandwich and a breakfast sub with veggies and eggs. I ate half of each and went to take a nap. I woke up, got up to use the restroom and turned on the TV, then was about to eat the other half of both sandwiches. I kid you not, they were both still whole. Like I had never touched them or eaten them. I jumped and took them out of the wrap and turned on every light, lamp in my apartment, even my closet lights. I knew I ate half of both of them. I mean, my stomach was still kind of full. I only took a two hour nap and woke back up to eat the rest. No one else was in the apartment. I lived alone with my toddler and she was away with her grandma for a few days. So just me and I had no visitors for weeks, maybe months at this point. It was like he was telling me that he was there and I didn't need to contact a psychic to talk to him. He's been there all along. It was comforting and freaky and hilarious at the all at once. Oh, and how did I know it was him and not someone else's ghost? He passed away in front of a subway. In my early childhood, my family and I lived in an old two-story farmhouse in rural Illinois. The first time I saw it, I remember getting up early to watch Saturday morning cartoons. As I started down the stairs, a dark silhouette that was vaguely man-shaped passed by the bottom of the stairs. It had the look of oily blackish grey smoke. No eyes or features, just the loose shape of a man. Frightened, I ran back to my room and hid under my covers until I fell back asleep. When I awoke, I tried going downstairs again. This time, it was on the stairs coming up. Again, I ran and hid in my bed. This time, it followed me into my room. I remember that to look at it was like being drawn into it and just froze in terror. I must have passed out. I don't remember what happened after it came into my room and I got a good look at it. Not a pleasant experience. I wouldn't recommend it. I can't imagine not having told my parents about the black ghost, but they must have not believed me. At no point in any of this did any adult do anything about it or acknowledge it. Because years later when I was in my 30s, I asked mom if she remembers me talking about it and she didn't. It went on from that first encounter when I was maybe five or six, up until we moved out of the house when I was nine. I do wonder how someone could miss the fact that their kid is spooked the fuck out all the time though. For years, if I was out in the yard playing by myself, there was a good chance the shadow was going to fuck my day up. It would just be behind me. If I turned around and looked behind me, it would be there. It would not often wander into my field of vision. I had to look at it. It did things to get my attention, like throwing sand or making noise. Sometimes it spoke, but not with a voice. I just kind of knew what it was saying. I would speak to it when I knew it was behind me. I stopped doing that when I asked who it was. The shadow told me it was me. I didn't like that at the time. All but once these incidents happened in broad daylight. Once, I was looking out the window and saw it come out of the barn at night. The only other thing of note is that I once lost a whole year when I was looking at the stars one night. I'll tell that another time. All the shadow incidents stopped when we moved from that house. I sometimes consider going back and trying to contact it, just to see what the hell it wanted.
One of the first things I've noticed is the thing's ability to mimic voices and other sounds. The best example that comes to mind is an incident that took place once when I was home alone. I went to my office to get some paper when I started hearing footsteps and banging cabinets in the kitchen, down the hall. It was so distinct and loud that I actually thought someone broke in and I grabbed a letter opener to defend myself. When I investigated, no one was in the kitchen. However, I thought I saw a black figure standing on my stair landing as I walked by, peering around the banister at me. A similar incident took place a few months ago. I was trying to go to sleep in my bedroom downstairs when I suddenly heard the doors upstairs slamming open and shut. My room seems to be especially active. The TV in the room often turns on and off on its own and the picture frames I have hanging on the wall occasionally rock back and forth in the night. The thing often mimics my daughter's voices. As I was getting ready one morning, I heard a voice that sounded like my eldest coming from my closet, saying, Hey mom. This is just one of several incidents. I also tend to hear scratching and breathing noises coming from the closet at night. The thing in the house also moves things around when I'm not looking. I heard a crash coming from my office one night, and when my daughter and I walked in to investigate, we saw that a few books had been tossed off by a shelf landing farther away than they would have if they'd simply fallen. I also had my metronome moved quietly off of my piano and onto the floor several feet away. Finally, there was one especially jarring incident where I thought I saw the thing in the house. I was outside grilling dinner in the yard and I decided to turn around and glance through my downstairs window. Something in me just told me to look. I swear that in the window... I saw this emaciated, skeletal-looking entity. It couldn't have been more than five feet tall, but it was looking out the window, right back at me. Honestly, I'm at a loss. I have no idea what the thing in my house is. I know some of the information must sound contrived and ridiculous, but I swear it's all true. My two young adult daughters, who are both skeptics, also believe something is in the house. They both have told me that they hear the mimicked voices and crashing sounds too. I live in a super rural area and walk my dog outside in the dark every night. Tonight, I was walking her later than usual and things felt very off. First, we went outside and I walked no, no, no more than two feet away from the door and felt something wet under my foot. I checked my shoes and there was a slug. It didn't look like a normal slug, but I don't know what else to call it, just in the middle of my shoe. I have no clue how it got there because I knew it wasn't there when I put them on. As I'm trying to figure out what the hell is in my shoes, my dog starts freaking out and growling at the house across the street. She doesn't do this somewhat commonly because they have dogs that attacked her once so I didn't think much of it and went inside to get her another pair of shoes. I walked back outside and was immediately struck with the feeling that something was wrong. The first time I was out I heard weird quiet music but just thought the neighbours were playing something. This time the music was gone but there was this incessant high-pitched shriek periodically. Me and my dog literally stopped. I just stopped and stood for like a minute listening. There was this periodic shriek and then this other sound, like a high pitched bark. Definitely not a fox, I know that sound and none of the dogs in the area bark like that, every now and again. The worst part is that everything was silent. If you live in the country, you know it's never silent, not even in the winter. I took a recording on my phone of the noises but they weren't super loud, so it didn't pick them up very well. So I'm feeling a little weird, but I get scared easily. So I tried to brush it off and let my dog go at the bathroom. As soon as I stop the recording, my dog starts flipping out, hackles rage, growling, barking, and jumping at something behind us in the yard. She didn't have to tell me twice, so we ran to the door and inside my house. 
I shut the door behind us and immediately felt relief. I felt like I was being chased trying to get to the door. My dog ran around the house and did a check out of the windows to make sure everything was clear. I guess. I went to bed. I don't know what happened, but it scared the shit out of me. I'm just hoping I'm being paranoid. My father was friends with a man who owned a house that was built close to a rock cliff. I used to go with him to visit beginning at age eight or nine, and of course would inevitably go near the cliff and stare down and across. It was 77 feet from the top of the cliff to a rock floor that a large pond lay about 30 feet beyond. If you stood at the top of the cliff looking directly across, there was another cliff of equal height and equal distance from the bottom, 70 to 77 feet. Except at the bottom of that cliff was just the large pond, no rock floor. For added effect, a two-man metal gondola connected to a steel cable and pulley system was installed to allow crossing to the other cliff with the pond 70 some feet below. I wanted to cross it, but both dad's friend and dad said it hadn't been used or maintained in years and most likely wasn't safe. At age 18, I revisited the spots with a female acquaintance I'd known for some time. Snow was everywhere and the pond was moving slowly filled with ice chunks. Scenic. The remnants of the gondola were gone. A decision at some point to remove it. We sat down near the edge of the cliff and I began to tell the gondola story pointing, gesturing and trying to be clever. While talking, I looked to my right and saw a long thick piece of metal protruding from the cliff side with a five foot piece of cable still attached, left over from the gondola. It had been an anchor bolt driven five feet deep into the solid rock cliff. I knew why it was still there, because I remember my dad and his friend attempting to remove it, or move it, and it wouldn't budge. I decided to demonstrate. I got up and got a firm grip. I yanked once, and the steel rod came out completely. Unfortunately, my weight was leaning backwards, and I went off the cliff. The moment my feet went airborne, my first thought was, I can't fall almost 80 feet and land on my back on a rock. Somehow, I was able to flip over in midair without touching anything and was now facing forward but had not yet dropped. But I then immediately did start to fall, which meant I defied gravity. The cliff wall was completely vertical. My feet came into contact with the cliff wall and I ran. Not fell, but ran down the vertical rock, maintaining perfect posture and incredible speed. Again, Gravity should have smashed me into the ground. It didn't. The ground was nearing quickly. Instead of my ankles breaking when coming in contact, I continued to run at the same speed off the cliff and onto the rock floor. Now looking horizontal, I couldn't slow down or stop. My legs felt like a detached machine that I couldn't stop still moving at an inhuman speed. I was headed straight toward the pond. I'd accepted it and said, so be it. With one foot in the grave left before the pond took over my legs locked and stopped. My inertia being what it was, didn't stop my upper torso, which leaned out over the water while my legs stayed locked into position. I slowly brought my upper torso in with my legs. I just stood there. I wasn't even out of breath, but my heart was pounding. I turned around and saw my friend looking down at me, unblinking and mouth agape. What I'd just done shouldn't have happened, but it did. The ride home was quiet for several seconds until I said, how did that happen? I laughed and said, wow. Pause. She said, you're a lucky guy. She didn't look over me. She didn't look at me when I took her home. She never looked at me again. I think she assigned what she witnessed me do as evil. Agreed, my body shouldn't have been able to defy gravity, but it did. I assign it as neither good nor evil, but whatever it was, was it can't be medically detected.
I spent my summers until 16 in Texas. I returned with my wife at age 24 for a visit with my family. I was anxious to share with her the different locations I'd grown up with. The year was 1979. After a full day of visiting old haunts, no pun intended, we exited a break in a wooded area and were greeted with the site of the old Winston Hospital. I was familiar with it as it was the place that treated my foot laceration at age 9 and my broken ankle at age 14. Except it was obvious the hospital had long been closed. It hadn't been a new building the two times that I'd frequented it, but now it looked large, desolate and creepy. I proceeded to fill my wife in on my time being there. It was approaching dusk. We had a Polaroid one-step camera. I started taking pics. About four. Three from the front, opposite side from us, and one from the back where we were facing. The photos developed and ejected within 70 seconds. But the camera operators of these instant photos were always instructed not to touch them other than along the neutral white borders because the photo continued to develop for several minutes after rejection. We stood around for a while, talking, then bagged the completed developed photos and left. The photos were viewed about one month later, with friends after arriving home. When the hospital photo was revealed, the three photos taken in front were perfect. The one photo at the back, surprising and creepy. The back of the hospital facing the woods we exited was six stories tall and not one pane of glass in any. The window openings were evenly spaced on every floor. In the photo, there were now semi-illuminated figures of people-shaped figures in the windows. Two in some, three in a few, one in the majority. There was no mistaking their shape. With the exception of a few, all of the windows had an image in it. Floors three and four had the most. Four through six as well, except all windows only showed a single figure. We were stunned. Our friends made ghost sounds and laughed and the conversation continued as they rummaged through the remaining photos. My wife and I just looked at each other in stunned silence. After everyone left, we examined the photo again. It was unmistakable. We ruled out camera or lighting faults simply due to the figures. They varied in height and positioning as people would do it if standing at a window. We'd gotten a ghost photo. My biggest regret, my wife asked me to burn it. Not tear it up and throw it away, but to burn it. She associated the image with evil. I didn't. She continued with her insistence throughout the week and as she watched, I burnt the photo until it was ashes. Had it been 2021 and not 1979, I would have sent it to Reddit, Polaroid, TikTok, the internet, and all of the now too familiar paranormal shows on the tube. But it wasn't, and I couldn't. But I had it. The ghost photo extraordinaire, and it's gone by my own hand. I've always believed in ghosts, like my whole life. I don't think I've ever been afraid of anything weird or unexplainable happening around me, because I feared that it could be a ghost or whatever. But yesterday, I had the weirdest experience of my life and it left me terrified. So I'd had a pretty rough day. It was the last day of my college term and I had had someone follow me home. I was a bit spooked, so my boyfriend came round since I was home alone with my dog. Anyways, we're playing with my dog and then I decide to work on my university application at the dining table. My boyfriend starts to say he's going to go upstairs and snoop around for his Christmas presents. So I push the chair out and run after him, just as a joke thing. My dog stood at the bottom of the stairs, he's not allowed upstairs unless it's bedtime, and waited for us. We start hearing him crying, which is really unusual. So we go downstairs immediately and comfort him. When we go back to the dining table, my heart drops. My living room is open plan. It's a living and dining space with a gap in between. In the gap, there's a big sideboard unit 
that has pictures of my relatives, some passed on, some still alive. And then I've just put one up on a baby scan of my niece or nephew. The room has a wood floor and the chairs are pretty heavy. When I go back into the room, the chair I was sitting on is right up against the unit, placed as if someone was sitting on it and looking at the pictures. My boyfriend thought it could be when I stood up to take after him, but we tried it out and the chairs were so heavy, it barely moved. We thought it could have been my dog, but he's too small and we would have heard the noise of the chair against the floor. We have no explanation for it and it's so weird that it's against the one place that my relative's pictures are on. It really creeped me out and I'm kind of scared to be alone in the house again. It happened the last two nights and I know it's nothing to do with my girlfriend whose home I'm currently at. The item in question is a boran. For those who don't know what that is, it's an Irish drum. It was bought by her deceased grandfather before I met her and him. Location is the bedroom. It's situated next to a set of drawers opposite the bed and tucked down the right hand side up against the wall. It's wedged in well and on top of some old clothes that have supported it for many months. There is no open window causing a draft anywhere in the house which could potentially move it either. It was moved the last two nights. I only told her this morning, so I know she's not moved it herself. Wednesday night, I was watching a YouTube video on my phone while she slept next to me. After I removed my headset, I heard it scraping against the drawers and rolling towards my side of the bed. There's junk on the floor, which if it happened naturally, it wouldn't have gotten to my side of the bed. I also have my clothes dumped on the floor next to my side of the bed. It came to rest on top of my clothes. So it rolled up on top of them. It made quite a bit of noise as it made its way over. Thursday night, I was tired and fell asleep quickly and slept through until this morning. When I woke up, I noticed it immediately. I called the girlfriend over to check it out. I didn't move it myself and she would have seen me or even heard me move out the bed as it's not the quietest bed when you adjust your position. It was in the same place as the previous night. It's been placed behind the sofa today and we're going to see if anything happens again tonight. She is certain that her grandfather is trying to get my attention with all this happening. It's certainly sudden, but confuses me. We never met as he passed before I met her. I don't get any sinister vibes from this. Just shocked more than anything. I've lived in my apartment for a little over six months now, and I'm convinced that there is an entity, possibly poltergeist, living here with my roommate and I. I'll explain some of the more jarring incidents, but there's also been countless little things happen, like things moving, random noises, etc. One morning, I was getting ready for work, went to the bathroom and came back to my room minutes later. I have a storage tote by my bed, that I use as a nightstand. Sitting on top of it were my keys, a folded shirt, and a rolling tray with baggies and rolling paper on that. When I entered my room, I saw the lid of the tote flipped over onto the ground, with everything that was on top of it underneath it, positioned exactly as it was when the lid was on the tote. Not as if the lid was lifted and everything fell off in the process and scattered onto the floor. I know the lid was on just minutes ago, because I woke up and grabbed my phone that was sitting on the toad. My roommate was in bed sleeping during this incident. This one freaks me out big time. I was sitting in my living room playing video games and saw a flash drive that was sitting on the TV stand just slowly move towards the edge and fall onto the ground. Roommate and I both saw that happen. That was significant because it was the first time we actually saw something move and didn't just hear it from another room. My mirror broke by falling over on its own while it was propped up against a wall in my room. I never got around to throwing it away though. 
A few months later, one of the glass shards that was still glued to the frame was removed and fell to the floor. I didn't see this happen, but heard it from outside my room. I've also gone into my room and randomly found small mirror shards on the ground near my bed, which is nowhere near where the mirror sits against the wall broken. I was hanging up clothes in my closet and felt something very cold come around my foot. It wasn't a solid touch, it just felt like energy, but also a very noticeably ice cold sensation. It was very sudden and scared the fuck out of me. This one sent me running straight out of my room. There were no drafts, door and window were closed and AC was off. The majority of the activity has happened in my room. I also suspect that this may be a poltergeist that is specifically attached to me. Because ever since moving into this apartment, I've had a very unusual frequent bad luck. Like just really out of the blue bad things happen to me on an almost daily basis. I've never experienced so much bad energy and negativity before in my life. It's not even that I'm unhappy or upset with all of this, but mostly just very perplexed. Me and my husband have always been believers in ghosts. And since moving into our new flats 14 months ago, he hasn't experienced any sleep paralysis or speaky feelings like something in his room with him. Our old house, he kept having sleep paralysis and never felt alone. I luckily never experienced anything there. Last night, something very strange happened. I woke up to go to the toilet last night and when I got back into bed, I tossed and turned a couple times. And when I finally got comfy, I was trying to drift off for maybe five minutes max. When I felt a little bit frightened, the feeling like someone was watching me and I felt my arm hair stand up. Then it was like a blanket of cold air covered my body, starting from my legs, then to torso and head. I wasn't under the duvet. As the cold air got to my torso, I felt like quickly batting it with my arm, but I was frozen in fear. As this cold air got to my head, I heard this muffled sound in my right ear. I had earplugs in. It was sort of like a croaky gurgling noise and then it was gone and my body started to warm up. Then I opened my eyes as quick as I could and as wide as I could and thought, what the fuck was that? This experience lasted less than a minute. I then grabbed my husband and his arm cuddled me back and he told me he couldn't sleep. I then said, do you feel weird? And he said, yes. I said, did you feel like something was in the room with us? He said, yes. This morning, I told him my experience and I asked him, did he feel cold? And he said he did. And all his hair stood up and he had felt something in the room. I've never experienced anything like this before. I'm actually quite excited I experienced it. Is that normal? Recently, my friend and I were recalling unexplained and possibly paranormal experiences we've had in the past. And I remembered this one that I'd pushed out of my mind. Honestly, for good reason. Both of us are believers in the paranormal. But also try to find a scientific and logical answer of what we've experienced before jumping to a paranormal explanation. However, neither of us were able to reach a logical conclusion on what I'm about to describe. Firstly, a bit of backstory. The house I grew up in was in a neighborhood almost completely surrounded by forest and greenery. While that sounds like it would be tranquil to be around, it was not. Myself and other friends of mine have felt very uneasy walking through those woods, even in the daytime. And not just the usual, I feel like someone's following me feeling, you sometimes get in forests or other areas like that. It felt like someone was watching you from the second you stepped into the woods. My house was on a street extremely close to the forest. It was about a two minute walk from my house to the main trail. Off the main trail, you were immediately met by thick forest. 
There were a few small clearings before the huge open field behind the forest itself. So it would take a long time to fight your way through the large forest before getting there. Very few people would make the trek out there, so I could almost guarantee that every time I went out there, I would be able to enjoy nature in serene isolation. In the warm months of the year, I liked to spend my free time walking through the forest, especially in fall when the leaves had all turned orange and red, just before they would start to fall from the trees. This story takes place on one of those fall days. I had been walking through the forest, listening to music with my earbuds in, for at least a couple hours. The last time I had run into anyone else was around an hour ago, as per usual for my walks. Even though I knew I was probably very alone, apart from various wildlife, I remember still not being able to shake the feeling that someone was very close to me. The sun was also setting, so any sane person would be heading home by now anyways. After walking for a while longer, I decided to eventually start heading back in the direction of the main trail. By this time, the sun was barely still out. It was getting dark pretty fast. I had almost made it to a pretty nice clearing, but there was no way in hell I was going to go there, only to have to walk home in the dark in the forest for hours, especially since I was already very unsettled. As I turned around to head back towards home, I heard a voice muffled by the music playing in my earbuds come from behind me. I had been in very deep thought for a few minutes, so I was a bit startled, but assumed I had accidentally spoken out loud to myself. Before I could even take a couple steps further, I heard someone speak again. Fully aware of my surroundings now, I froze dead in my tracks, my heart pounding as I took my right earbud out and sharply turned around to see who was behind me. I was horrified to see a person standing with their back towards me, looking off in the distance. Everything about them looked so familiar, and it took me a couple seconds to come to the horrifying realisation that I was staring into the back of myself. It was wearing my dark navy and white plaid jacket, the black hood of the very hoodie I was wearing, resting on the collar of my jacket, even my same short, blonde, unkempt hair with its brassy undertones shining in the last bit of light left from the setting sun. And then it spoke again. It's not too far ahead now, in my voice. My exact voice, cadence, tone, everything. It took me a second to snap out of the paralyzing fear I was in and book it home. I didn't try to speak to whatever it was. I just ran as fast as I could to the main trail and out of the forest. As I ran, I could have sworn I had heard someone chasing me the whole way out of the forest, which might have just been a product of being hyper aware of my surroundings in my state of fear. But I didn't dare look behind me because I was terrified of what I might have seen when I looked behind my shoulder to check. After nearly tripping on fallen branches and stumps a million times, I tore out of the forest and onto the road adjacent to my street. I kept running until I was on the complete opposite side of the road from the edge of the forest. I turned around and the only thing I saw were the bushes and branches I pushed through on my way out, springing back into their natural place. I stood there, staring at the forest for a minute, before heading home in fear whatever that was would pop out, but saw nothing. I didn't go back into the woods for some time after that, and almost every returning visit, I brought a friend with me. My friend told me she also had odd experiences in those woods, and so had her sister. They had both seen tall, dark figures standing in the woods when they took walks through the forest together. One of them would see the figure, say nothing about it to the other, and then buck it out of the forest together. I'd seen similar figures, but had written it off as me seeing shadows from bigger trees, my mind playing tricks on me, etc. I'd blocked this out of my memory for a long time, until my friend had brought up her strange experiences in the forest, and how she constantly felt uneasy in it. Still to this day, years later, I cannot come up with a rational or scientific explanation for what I saw, and have had little luck looking online for answers too. By far, the craziest thing I've ever experienced.
My question is why it's happening. I'm only 20 years old and I still live at home. My family built this house 15 years ago. The first and only family to live in it. So nobody has died within the physical house ever. We do live in the Midwest, so that may say something about the land that the house is built on, but I honestly couldn't say. Pretty much ever since I was a kid and we moved into the house, I've experienced strange occurrences that I can only attribute to being paranormal. My older brother recalls a couple experiences of his own, but we're the only two in the house that seriously believe that they are paranormal occurrences. The earliest I can remember was in the late 2000s, waking up in the middle of the night, seeing what looked like Aztec warriors doing some sort of dance at the end of my bed. I wouldn't say it was sleep paralysis because I could sit up and move my arms and legs. This went on for about 15 to 20 seconds before I blinked and they were suddenly gone. When I moved into another room on the ground floor, there were multiple times I would wake up in the middle of the night to hearing harmonica music coming from the living room. On one occasion when I heard the music, I went out to see what it was and found every light in the house was turned on. On this occasion, my brother also remembers waking up face down on the floor in his room in a plank position with the lights on with no memory of getting down there. My latest encounter was when I was working on our computer in the downstairs living room. I was home alone at the time the rest of the family was out of town. When I heard the door to our stairs go upstairs shut. It startled me, obviously, knowing I'm supposed to be alone. So I just called out, who did that? After a couple seconds, a weird airy voice that sounded like it was coming from all around me said, I did. That was the first time I had actually had two way contact with whatever was messing around in the house. And being alone that night, I went and stayed at a friend's house. A little while ago, I got a call from my brother who was alone at the house, saying that he was laying in bed in his room watching TV, with the door just barely cracked open. He said that he heard tapping on the door and turned to see fingers tapping on the inside of the door, as if someone was hiding on the other side, grabbing the side of the door with their hand. When he got up to open the door to see who was doing it, the hand disappeared back outside of his room and he couldn't find anyone or anything in the house. Other small things happen pretty often, like keys or wallets that you know were sitting on the end table going missing for a half hour, then suddenly reappearing exactly where you left them. Well, honestly, it's a loss. Usually with stuff like this, there's a pattern to the behavior, where it happens, what happens, but what we've witnessed just seems like the most random junk and for absolutely no reason. I just want to start off by saying I'm 37 years old and I've never experienced anything like this in my life. And I hope to never experience it again. This happened three days ago. It was 11.30 at night and I was taking my dog out to go to the bathroom. My boyfriend and I live on about four acres of land. We have an overgrown field in the distance. It's somewhat near the house, but not super close. I was carrying one of those spotlight flashlights. It's so powerful that you can see the beam shoot through the night sky. My dog and I were getting close to the field, so I decided to scan it with the flashlight. What I saw next terrified me. I saw this creature walking through the field. It had a human shaped head, but the eyes were nothing like I had ever seen. They were so big that it took up the majority of its face. They glowed in a way that I had never seen before. It was a piercing glow. I know that flashlights can create a certain type of reflective glow, but this was different. It was almost like the light was shooting out of its eyes. I live in a wooded area so I have come into contact with many animals at night. This was not the eyes of any animal I've seen. It's weird because I don't recall seeing a mouth, but that could be because I was so fixated on its abnormally large eyes that I wasn't paying attention to its lower face. Its eyes had this shocked but evil look to them. 
That expression really stood out to me because it was so eerie. Now let's get to the body. It was somewhat human shaped, but it had abnormally long extremities. Even though the overgrown field covered some of its body, I could still tell the shape of it. The arms were too long for its body. I checked out how tall the overgrown grass was the next day, and I estimated that the creature was about six feet tall. The way it walked terrified me. It was facing me and walking sideways while staring at me. I have to admit, I got so scared that I lowered the flashlight to the ground, but then I got enough nerve to raise it back up after a few seconds. It had made its way down at the field a little bit more, but it was still walking sideways and staring at me with those terrifying eyes. This happened back in 2019 when I went back to my hometown for summer vacation. One night, I dreamed about going on a road trip. In that dream, I was in a car looking outside the window. I saw a black figure behind the bush appearing and disappearing as the car moved. We stopped by the gas station, but I could still see the black figure staring at me. The feeling was creepy and it gave me chills down my spine. As the car started to move again, I turned around and saw the black figure right behind us. I was spooked. I suddenly woke up in cold sweats and my body was numb. As soon as I touched the blankets, I felt uneasy. I could feel eyes on me. I slowly looked down towards the bottom of the bed. The black figure I saw in my dream was on the foot of my bed. I tried to scream, but my voice was stuck in my throat. I was too scared, so I slowly pulled up the blanket over me while crying. I covered myself. I dared not move. After a while, I heard the footsteps. From the bottom of the bed, it slowly went towards the door. As soon as the footsteps left the door, I heard my brother call out my name. He asked where I was going. My mom probably woke up because he was shouting loudly. She asked what he was doing. He said, I saw sister coming out of her room, slowly walking straight to the bathroom. I called her out, but she didn't answer. At this point, I was terrified and started crying loudly. My legs were all numb because I was on my bed and what my brother saw was the black figure and not me. My mom called out my name. I gathered all my strength, shut my eyes and started running towards their bed. My brother started shaking and crying when he saw me. He told my mom that he clearly saw me entering the bathroom and me coming out of my bedroom was impossible. We both cried loudly. Dad went to check the bathroom, but nothing was there. To this day, we don't know what it was, but we remembered vividly what we saw that night. So when I was about 13 years old, my dad's British friend got himself a new girlfriend. We'll call her Crazy Anne. She was nuts and possibly on a couple of substances. Crazy Anne had two children and was living with my dad's friend. So they would constantly come over. Well, one day when she comes over, she mentions that she works at our local canyon nature preserve and how there's a bunch of really old cabins back there. And she thinks they're haunted. I kind of thought she was full of it because she's pretty off a rocker, so I thought nothing of it. Then a couple of days later on the weekend, she offers to take me and her kids for a hike at the preserve. After a little ways into the hike, sure enough, there is a creepy, decrepit, abandoned farm sitting out there. She says she wants to take pictures to see if she can catch any ghosts. So while she's doing that, I'm looking at the front door of the farmhouse, which is cracked open. I look away for a second and look back and there's a very angry looking old man staring at me. I was a bit startled, so I looked away for a split second and when I looked back, he was gone. I turned to look at Crazy Anne's daughter who was sitting next to me, looking in the same direction. And before I could say anything, she went, did you see that old guy? And I go, 
what did the guy look like? And I shit you not, she describes this guy to the T. By this point, I'm like, okay, maybe we should continue going on down the trail. So we call for her mom and continue with our hike. As we're going along, I start feeling little pebbles hitting my back, like someone's throwing them at me. I turn around in time to see what looks like a shadow figure duck behind a tree and then peek out at me. Keep in mind it's bright and sunny outside, so I should know what the person looks like very clearly. Crazy Anne and kids are also in front of me. I decided to ignore the shadow figure and keep walking when I feel the pebbles hitting me again and I turned around to see it again. About this time, Crazy Anne also stops and says, oh, I guess the ghosts are playing with you too. And I asked her what she meant and she said she thinks there's a mischievous child spirit who likes to throw pebbles and play hide and seek with you on the trail. By this point, I'm like, no. And I start hurrying up on the trail. After that, nothing really happened. And we just headed back to my house. Now, I absolutely hate the cold. And I only take cool showers when I absolutely have to. Because it helps my hair more than hot or warm water does. Because of this, I avoided the shower for a few days, but eventually my hair started to feel absolutely terrible. So I decided to suck it up and take a cold shower. Only the water stayed hot the whole time, more than five minutes. And I know this because I had music playing so I could better keep track of time. My shower took about 10 minutes because of how long I have to keep the conditioner in. And not once did it even show a sign of trying to turn cold. In fact, it was even a little too hot. I didn't think anything of it, figuring that my dad had probably fixed it the night or morning before that. I had my shower around noon. That was until after what I saw when I got out. See, when I got out and left the bathroom, it sounded like someone was still walking in the bathroom itself. And instead of just hearing my feet on the hardwood floor of my living room, I also heard feet on the tile of the bathroom. I turned around and saw a blue, humanish shaped mist walking away from the shower and towards the door. It then turned into an orb and disappeared. At first, I didn't think anything of it, even with all the stuff that goes down in my house. Later that day though, my parents also had a shower and reported the same thing. The water stayed hot the whole time, around 20 minutes. When my mom came out of the bathroom, she claimed demon magic and I remembered the figure I had seen after my shower. You see, I'm a very supernatural person. At least I think that's the best way to explain it. I've been possessed before and now I do believe that somehow I'm under the protection of whatever it is in my house that has been taken to me. When I told my friend about this, she suggested that I knew I was dreading a cold shower and decided to help keep it warm and it just extended all the way to now. There is also the fact that I had the door wide open while showering to keep an ear out for my dog, as it was just me and Doggo in the house at that time. And sometimes she likes to get into trouble, so the steam wouldn't have had a chance to gather in the bathroom, so the blue mist couldn't have been the steam. Right now, the water is still warm when taking a shower for a long period of time yet the water pressure is basically non-existent. Though my dad admitted that that was his fault from when he was screwing around with the pipes trying to fix it before he knew of my experience. My dad now believes that he knows what's wrong with it and is currently trying to fix it as I write this. My mom and I believe that my creature had something to do with the sudden hot water though, and my dad is indifferent. Yet with everything else in my house that would qualify it for a BuzzFeed Unsolved episode. I'm certain that it had to be my creature giving me, and by extension my family, a helping hand. So I live in a very old house and have my whole life. My mom claims that the paranormal have always been in the house and my dad always said it was bullshit. And I only just started getting paranormal experiences a few years ago. 
I will put these in order of what I believe is the least to most spooky. First is classical music. My mom claimed that in her old bedroom every night in the early a.m., she would hear classical music playing quietly. My house has been renovated and a bigger master bedroom has been built, so I'm now in the old master bedroom. Now as a high school student with sleep problems, I've been up all night a lot and every time I am, at exactly 4am, I have heard classical music start playing quietly and I always zone out afterwards so I never notice when it stops. Second, and the shadow people. I've always seen random shadows move around out of the corner of my eye, but I always thought I was just seeing things. Until this one time I was hanging out in my room and I saw a shadow of a tall man wearing a hat on my wall. I knew it wasn't just the shadow of my ceiling fan, because those shadows tend to stay on the ceiling, and my room light is very soft and dim. So all the shadows that cast in my room are usually very soft. But this shadow is intense and deep black. I also know that it couldn't be coming from outside because my blinds were shut, and they're blackouts. As soon as it seemed that the shadow noticed that I was watching it, it ran off. Thirdly, my family's Ouija board went missing. This is the type of Ouija board that I would call real because my grandfather carved it. So it wasn't just one of the game ones you can get at Walmart. This happened just when I was planning to use the board to see if I could contact whatever is in my house. It was always kept under my parents' bed, but the day I planned to use it, it disappeared. My parents, my friend and I tore apart the house looking for it, but it was never to be seen again. My dad is actually making me a new one for my 17th birthday, and I will keep a close eye on this one. The last one solidified my belief in demons, because I believe what happened was the work of a demon. So a bit of backstory for this one. I was an edgy child and often said I wanted to die. Untrue. And all my friends were also edgy, so they would ask, when do you want to die? And every time I would say something along the lines of, if I'm not dead by the time I'm 16, I want the devil to drag me down to hell. This happened the night of my 16th birthday in the early AM. I had randomly woken up around 3 AM and I felt sick, so I stood up in case I was going to throw up. But as soon as I stood, I blacked out and came through about an hour later. I was still standing in the same spot, but I was wearing different clothes. A different pyjama set that I only used in the winter and it was summer and my room was a mess. My pillows and blankets had been thrown off the bed, my books and pop figures were all over the place and my cross that I have up was taken down. This could have been something more logical but I believe it was paranormal. Every day for almost a year since I've woken up around 4am to the feeling of being watched.